What's up Money Tribe? Welcome back to another stock analysis video and I am really excited about today's video. In fact, this is my first undervalued stock pick for 2022. And as you guys know, I like to look for undervalued stocks throughout the course of the year and I scour through annual reports. I look at industry sectors, of course, track the economy and uh, I'm always on the lookout for a stock that I think can perform really well in the next couple of years. And so with that said, the stock that I'm talking about today is a stock that is pretty iconic for me. The stock is of course, Monster Energy. And uh, Monster is a brand that I have grown up with. It is a brand that I have a close affiliation with. Of course, uh, I'm an active sportsman and I do like my adrenaline sports. And that is one of the reasons why Red Bull and Monster Energy have always been two brands that have been pretty iconic for me. One thing that both of the brands have done fairly well is build out the lifestyle element of their company and of course they've made it a very desirable brand so much so that most of the kids growing up even now these days really look to have these brands associated with the clothing they wear the cars they drive and the sports that they do so they've done an exceptional job on that and uh, i think monster energy has been making some pretty big moves in the last uh, two to three years and I think that this stock is poised for a really big breakout over the next couple of years. So in this video, we're gonna be going over some of those key elements that I think could be catalysts. And uh, I'm also gonna be talking about where I think the price points are going over the next 12 months. That being said, I am looking at the stock as a multi-year investment. So it's not something I'm looking at the short to medium term. I am looking at this at least beyond the next three years. And uh, I think that Monster is poised for very, very good growth. So that being said, let's quickly jump in and have a look at the price charts, have a look at what's been going on with the stock. And then of course, let's talk about some of the items that could be driving the price over the next while. So the first thing we need to look at is uh, the price charts. In fact, over the last year, the stock is down 3%. And uh, in the last six months, it's down 6%. And in the last month, an additional 5.39%. Now, interestingly enough, though, on the volatility side, the stock hasn't been that volatile. Uh, looking at the 52-week high, $99. 52-week low, $80.92. Now, looking at uh, the analyst rating on the stock, uh, Simply Wall Street believes that the stock is currently trading at 19.8% below their fair value estimate. Talking about the fact that earnings are forecast to grow at 8.7%, uh, I'll be talking about that a little bit more in detail later because I actually think that number is going to be very different to what the analysts are rating. And then of course, the fact that earnings have grown by 16.1% per year over the last five years, and they do not detect any risks on Monster. Now looking at uh, some of the uh, news items and some of the articles out there, some really good content out. So I do encourage you guys, if you are going to invest into the stock, do some reading, wrap your head around where the company is going. But uh, one of the big plays that the company is making is of course going into the alcoholic beverage side of things. Now, they have uh, taken on an acquisition of a craft beer company called Canarchy, and it is a craft uh, brewery collective. Now they're gonna be leveraging uh, the liquor licenses there. They are of course gonna keep the existing management and structures in place. However, the deal does include uh, does not include Canarchy's standalone restaurant, so that's something to keep in mind. It is specifically around the craft brewery side of things. And uh, Canarchy will, post acquisition, function independent, independently with its existing leadership team. That being said, there is of course the opportunity to leverage the alcohol licenses. Now the move will help Monster Beverages uh, leverage a future venture into alcoholic beverages, something that I think is a big potential play for them. And uh, this is of course something that uh, could potentially push Monster uh, into a whole new market segment. In fact, if you go back in the history with Red Bull and you have a look at uh, Red Bull and vodka and all those drinks that eventually launched um, they did exceptionally, exceptionally well in a completely new market space. And so, uh, of course, beverage companies are always looking to tap into new categories like ready to drink uh, energy drinks with alcoholic um, beverages included in that growth factor drive. And the current trend of adding alcoholic drinks to uh, their product portfolio um, could be a huge, huge catalyst for the company going forward. Now that ac acquisition was of course 330 million and uh, looking at the numbers, I think they actually got a really good deal. Um, in addition to buying a really solid business, uh, Monster Beverages has of course um, added the dimension 
of uh, being able to enter into a whole new market category. Now, something else that is interesting, the current consensus from uh, CNN analysts is that uh, 22 investment analysts were polled and uh, all of them but one gave a buy rating. And looking ahead to tip ranks, they had 13 um, analysts look at the stock, 11 gave buy ratings and uh, two gave hold ratings. None of them were looking at a sell rating. And then looking at the current pricing, some of them talking about a high of a potential $115. Again, I've got a lot to say on that because I have been extrapolating numbers and doing a lot of work behind the scenes, looking through the annual reports, looking at minutes of meetings and really trying to understand the BI side of things and where the business could be going. So just very quickly, if we come across here and have a look at our uh, stock sheets, I wanna walk you through some of the numbers that I'm seeing on the current stock sheet and talk about why I think this is a really good investment at this moment in time. So of course, uh, one of the things that we need to talk about is that market cap. The market cap is currently pre-acquisition sitting at 47 billion. The share price on the 10 year was 1583, currently trading at 89.91 with a P ratio of 31. Net margin sitting at 28%, which is actually pretty good for the industry. And uh, the net equity sitting at 5.1 billion, which is an equity to market cap of 10.85. If you've been following the channel for some time, you do know that I like equity to market cap to be above 10%. Now there is no dividend on the stock, however, very strong key uh, free cash flow at uh, 1.3 billion. Now moving down to our key ratios, have a look at this guys, debt to equity is sitting at 0.32%. One of the reasons I really like the stock for this year, part of my strategy for 2022 is not to invest into companies that have high debt to equity ratios. So they are very, very strong on not having debt. And that's something I think is gonna put them in an incredible position for growth, leading into also what is arguably almost a post pandemic era. We're starting to see a lot of eventing coming back. We're starting to see you know, a lot more consumption in public spaces in terms of people going to restaurants, people going to entertainment venues. And so I think that uh, Monster could be poised for massive, massive breakouts. Now having a look at uh, the price to, uh, or sorry, the free cash flow to debt, they can cover 125% of the position, which is something I really like. Price to sell and price to book, I think is fair at nine and seven respectively. The five year beta is sitting at 1.12. So it is almost tracking the market at the moment. Insider holding guys, 28%. We always talk about this on the channel, how important it is to invest into companies, especially high growth companies that have strong insider holding combined with good institutional holding. We've got 28 and 65% respectively. The short ratio is almost non-existent, 0.64 on a ratio of 1.52. And have a look at this, return on equity, return on asset and return on investor capital through the roof. 28%, 22%, and 81% respectively. And have a look at that current ratio, 4.7, just phenomenal. And then the earnings per share compound annual growth has been sitting at 12.91%. So really, really good uh, compound annual growth on those earnings per share. And then look at the year on years, of course there has been a little bit of shareholder dilution, but it is negligible. 630 to 638, uh, that is just, uh, you know, pretty much very well contained. There is dilution, so they're gonna get marked down for that, but I don't think it is a, an area of concern. The assets have been growing nicely. Top line revenue has been growing really, really well, as has the bottom line revenue. They felt a little bit of pressure here on the operating cash flow, but of course we do need to take into account that they have, of course, been engaging in acquisitions, they have been expanding productivity. There was, of course, a lot of discussion around aluminium shortage uh, in terms of their supply, that's been cleared up. And so we are expecting that in the next trailing 12 months, we're gonna have another clean run of green here. So moving down to our 18 point checklist. So just very quickly to explain, we break this into three key areas. We have fundamentals, momentum, and growth. None of the factors are weighted more heavily than the other. What it does, it gives us a good overview of a stock. It lets us know where they are particularly strong, where they're particularly weak, and that then becomes the basis for our investigations and further decision-making process. So just very quickly on the 18-point checklist, first of all, looking at fundamentals, exceptionally strong. The P ratio is exactly where we want it. They have strong net margins. They have good equity. 
The dividend cost is less than free cash flow. Debt is well, well managed, less than 40%, and the current ratio is greater than one. The only place where we're marking them down is the fact that there has been some shareholder dilution. But as I mentioned, not really a factor for concern. Next, moving to the momentum factors. On top line revenue, they've done really well. Three consecutive years of growth, total revenue, gross profit, and operating income. And of course, on the bottom line revenues, net income, is seen consecutive growth. They have, however, fallen short on the operating cash flows and free cash flows. So momentum, once again, not doing too badly. They definitely are exceeding expectations there. Now coming down to the growth factor, exceptionally strong. They definitely have the growth factor. And uh, they have, of course, the share price that has doubled, the return on equity, return on asset, return on investor capital, and the earnings per share compound annual growth, all of these in excess of 10%. So really, really strong on the growth side of things. Now, of course, this brings us down to our intrinsic evaluations. Essentially, what we're looking to do is get some kind of an idea as to the intrinsic value versus the market cap. And this helps us decide whether the business is overvalued or undervalued. Now, we have two models. We use a free cash flow model. We also use a earnings per share model. That being said, these are not the only deciding factors on the intrinsic value. And of course, we have to look at some of the factors playing into future potential value. So before we do that, let's talk about the free cash flow valuation. The company is currently trading on a multiple of 36.48, which is actually higher than what we would typically be comfortable with. In fact, our multiples we work on on the low, medium and high side is 20, 25 and 30 respectively. So that brings us up to a valuation today of $51 per share. Take into account 12% growth, that would put us at $57 per share against the free cash flow. Now moving down a little bit further to our uh, DCF model, and this of course is looking at a discount rate on the earnings per share of 15%, taking in our bear, bull and median case on a fair PE of 25, and we're coming out at an average case today that we believe on the intrinsic value, the stock is worth $69. Take into account a 12% growth rate, that puts us at $77 over the next 12 months. Now, of course, there is a lot to dissect beyond these numbers because there are acquisitions that are gonna bring revenue into the company. There is the fact that they're entering into completely untapped new market spaces where they haven't been in before. So there is a lot of potential upside here. And so I almost feel like whilst we don't wanna weight those into our decision, I think you're kind of getting this company at a big discount today based on the future potential that's coming online. So let's quickly have a look at our verdict. So just quickly looking at the verdict, fundamentally, definitely got the fundamental going for them. They are strong there. Momentum could do a little bit better, but they certainly are hitting the mark and they have got a clear, clear uh, history of growth that has been proven. So looking at the analyst's general consensus target, they're coming out at $107. Now this $107 price point is based on the current set of financials. However, we have done some deep diving on the uh, business intelligence side of things. We have looked at the potential markets that they're going into. We're looking at the acquisition factor and taking all of these things into account, as well as the fact that if the pandemic continues to slow, this company could be poised for really good growth. And so we have a projection out of $120, and that is, in our opinion, a very moderate price point. So we believe that there is at least 33% margin upside in the stock. And for that reason, we have a strong, strong buy rating out on the stock. In fact, I have already started averaging into my positions. One of my strategies, as you guys will probably know from following the channel, I don't simply go and buy a stock. I start picking up small blocks of the stock and uh, depending on where the stock price moves up or down, I'm okay with it. I just average into that position and it's something my, I'm probably going to do throughout the course of this year. I'm going to continue to build my position and uh, this is one of the rare cases where I actually love the company and I also love the stock. So I think uh, this is gonna be a very interesting holding for me and I'm looking forward uh, to watching the company grow. I'm looking forward to watching it expand and uh, I think they have a very, very solid and dynamic management team who are doing a great job at managing the company. And of course, there have been some scandals, just like every other company out there, but uh, we are less concerned with the news and more concerned with the key fundamentals driving the business. So I hope you guys find value in this stock. Let me know if you are going to be putting it on your watch list. Let me know if you're currently invested, why you invested, and uh, 
Of course, if you do have questions, that's what the comment section is for. Get involved in the discussion down below. And uh, as always, uh, if you find yourself a little bit stuck or need a little bit of inspiration, there's a very active group of money tribers here on the channel. So get involved in those discussions, comment on each other's comments, and you'll find that you will very soon be in good company with like-minded people. Now, that being said, if uh, you would like to see more content like this, you can check out some of the playlists on our home page. Uh, we've in fact got a very big undervalued playlist. You can go and check out some of our undervalued picks over the last year. In addition to which, uh, if uh, you would like to see some more videos just like this, you can also check the videos coming up on your screen shortly. And of course, 2022 is bound to be a challenging year, so we are preaching a very simple mantra, which is investing is about keeping a cool head and making sure you keep your emotions out of it.